and he shall direct your path. You may be seated. My friends, we're going to continue in this time of our family hour, and we're going to ask that you would use this remaining time to greet the family and comfort the family and greet and comfort one another. At the 11 o'clock hour, we'll come back to begin our service and celebration of life for Mrs. Brenda Pye. May the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you, is our prayer.
God bless all of you. We greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ again to the Perry family and to all of you who have gathered, especially to the family. We want you to know that we're praying with you and we're praying for you that God will continue to bless, comfort, and keep as we know that he's able to do. At the family's request, as we have just a few more moments in our family hour, if there are those of you who would like to share with the family to be a blessing to them with words of comfort, you can do so by coming now as we have just a few moments left in our family hour. But at the family's request, if you would like to come now and have some remarks, reflections to share, to be a blessing to the family, you can do so by coming to this podium to my right. Again, anyone wishing to have any remarks, you can do so by coming now to the podium to my right. Um, Brenda was my first cousin, very beloved first cousin. We were very close. We grew up together. Very close, thank you. And um, for the most part, I pretty much kind of lived in the Morris household growing up. And uh, her loss has extremely been devastating to me. Um, it's been a very difficult process for me to deal with. But today, even though I, I, you know, I did shed a few tears, I said I wasn't because I don't want to mourn her death. I want to celebrate her life. Amen. And she lived a beautiful life. She was a beautiful person. She was the kindest person you could ever know. And so I want to leave here today cherishing my memories of her, my many, many memories of me and her having wonderful, great times and to her husband, her son, and her remaining three siblings, I will hold you in prayer as you continue to navigate this process of grief. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Walter Benjamin, and I'm from West Virginia. And I knew Miss Vivian Shelton, and Mr. Pye and I were just talking. What a wonderful job he has done with the family. You don't see many people like him. And I know the son, too, because I live down the street. I helped build this church years ago. And I've been coming here when somebody passed that I know, you know, didn't know the business. And I recommend this funeral home to a lot of people because it's a family funeral home. Everybody work here has a beautiful attitude, especially the people that work that I see outside because I live down the street. God bless each and every one and keep coming and trust in God because he's coming for all of us. I love you and thank you. Good morning. My name is Jeanette Bell. And I met Brenda and OZ Pie and Z because we were next door neighbors in Lathrop Village. And quickly, Brenda and I became friends, very close friends. I loved her, I loved her so much. And some of the things I wanted to share was how smart she was. She was one smart lady. And not only smart, she was very wise. And she used to give the greatest advice. And you don't get those combinations very often. She had a shy side to her, and she shared those with me, what makes her nervous? 
But on the other hand, she said, you know, I, I'm good at what I do at Pi. We work great together. I know how to do people when it comes to my business. And she was right. And they built that beautiful business together. One of the things we always, always talked about, Miss Brenda always liked to talk about hair. It could be straight hair, perm hair, curled hair. She didn't care. We always had a conversation about hair. That was one of her favorite things. So I hope I'm doing her OK today. But I really, really love this woman. We shared so much, and I was so proud of her and her family. And I just want to say, may his peace be with you till we see again. To Pastor Keith Dwayne Wilson, Sr., and to other clergy here today, I'm Pastor Kenneth James Flowers of the Greater New Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church, and I rise to expend, extend our deepest sympathy to the entire Pi family. Uh, Sister Brenda and her loving husband, I remember when they first started out many, many years ago, I was just a teenager, and I always remembered how sharply dressed they were, how immaculate they were, and how gracious and courteous they were. They always did their people well. And then I remember when they moved to Mississippi, and I call him my little brother, Ozzy IV, uh, took over. Uh, that is my frat brother, amen. Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. So Ozzy the fourth is my little brother, and so I, I look out after him and make sure he's all right, make sure that he is straight. And I want to say to you, especially Ozzy the fourth and to our nest and to the children, that your big brother is still going to keep looking out for you. We're going to still be there for you. Whatever you all need after this day, just know that we're here for you. To your dad, Brother Pi, the third you may be in Mississippi, but our love from Detroit goes all the way to Mississippi. Keep your hand in God's hand. And I want to add this one thing. My wife is here today, uh, Sister Flowers, we call her Lady T. She met Sister Brenda at a funeral at Christland Baptist Church some years ago. They were here visiting. And for whatever reason, she looked at my wife and she saw something in her. And she just poured into my wife out the clear blue sky right there on the steps and she began talking to her talking to her pouring into her sharing things about what God had in store for her I thank God because that's the kind of person that she was to recognize your God-given talent and pour into you so to this family to the funeral home staff Keep your hand in God's hand and just always remember that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And just remember if when you give the best of your service, telling the world that the Savior has come, be not dismayed when men won't believe you, but he'll understand and say well done. Oh, when I come to the end of my journey, weary of life, and the battle is won, carrying the staff and the cross of redemption. He'll understand and say, well done. Good night, Sister Joyce. We will see you in the morning. God bless you. Due to the lateness of the hour, we will be very brief. We just want to say that we're the June Bugs from Greater Love Tabernacle Church of God in Christ, just across the street. And for over 25 years, Sister Brenda, was, we started out with about seven of us. We're down to three now. But we're very thankful to God that we did know. We loved her. We loved the family. And we were at the hospital when she uh, had the baby, her baby boy. <laughs> We're very thankful to have known her. I'm going to let Sister Maybelline, we're not preachers, so we won't be up here very long. I thank God for today, even in, in this setting. 
And I want to say to um, Mr. Ozzy Pie and Z, I used to call him Lil Z, I used to work here when they first opened up. I used to be the barber. I took care of the dead and the living. Hallelujah. So it was a, a privilege and a blessing working with them. And um, our friendship grew from, from that, just not only at the church, but in the establishment as well. My daughter used to babysit Z when they was living upstairs. And she used to think that the people were downstairs was going to come upstairs and get her. But I thank God on today. I just want to share my love with you all and to know that we will love you forever. God bless and may the Lord continue to keep you. God bless you. My name is Clyde Tyus. I am a former employee of the Pie Funeral Home. Uh, many years ago, when, I, when Mr. Pie first started off in the little small building, um, I was here with him for 13 years, him and his wife, and they loved me like a son. And I just want to let them know that I truly enjoyed the time that you all gave me. And just to be able to be a part of Brother Z, Arnessa, Miss, uh, Mother Mabel, and all of you all's life. I speak for all of those who have come along with us who worked with Pi Funeral Home back when we was in the small building. I'll never forget when she said, Clyde, we're going to build a new building. And I said, well, Miss Pi, let's do it. She said, we're going we gonna, to we gonna give them our best. I said, yes, we will, Miss Pi. And I'm so glad that I was able to be a part of the journey and to be a part of this woman's life. She was truly a jewel, and I thank God for her. I pray that everyone that lives that she has touched, that she has touched you in a very special way because she has been not only a blessing to you, but she's been a blessing to this world, to Mr. Pi, and to me and my family. God bless you all. Continue to keep this family in your prayers. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Paula Davis, and I am a proud member of the Trinity Missionary Baptist Church in Pontiac, where my pastor is Reverend Dr. John D. Tobert. I stand here today because Brenda was one of my Sunday school students. Uh, Brenda came to Trinity, and she became a part of our Bible exposition Sunday school class. And she had the most wonderful character, the most wonderful smile, the most wonderful and loving uh, way about her that she attracted all of our class to her. And I want the Pi family to know that the Bible exposition class is in your prayers. Um, Brother Pi, the family, all the children, grandchildren, we are going to miss her and know that she will never be forgotten. And just know that God knows just what you stand in need of. And he is waiting for you to just reach out to him. So we thank God for her life. We thank God for all that she added to our lives. And we give God the glory. Amen. Amen. Again, we thank all of you for sharing with the family. We do ask that you would continue to pray with them and pray for them because they will need your prayers long after we have left from this place today. We want to ask all of the clergy who are present, uh, if you would just stand and that we might recognize all of the clergy, all pastors, ministers. Amen. Can we give God praise for them? Amen. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. This time we're going to, as we prepare to begin this service and celebration of life of this hour, beloved sister, Sister Brenda Pye, we thank God for her and we thank God for her life and we thank God for this family. We're going to uh, receive 
the staff of the OH Pi uh, Funeral Home uh, as we come to show our support and our love to this our family as well. They're going to come uh, in their uh, own way uh, led by uh, Brother John Blakely. And again, our Pi staff is coming at this time.
love the Lord, if God has been good to you, can we give God some praise in here today? Come on, don't pity pat him like that. He's still good. Come on, let's give God some praise. He's still good. And he is worthy, worthy of all our praise. To this family, again, our condolences to Mr. Pai and the entire family. God is yet able, and he's yet still in control, and he's able to do anything but fail. If you believe that, come on, let's, let's celebrate God. Let's give God. Amen. We've come to celebrate this life. We've come to give thanks to God for this life. And we thank God again for all of you who have come to share with the family in this time. We'll continue as we go through this order of service. We'll have our scripture reading. We'll have prayer. We'll have a selection. Then we'll have the acknowledgments and the reading of the obituary. Those who have been designated to give remarks will come at that time. We'll have another selection and then Minister Wells will come and give us what God has given for this time. Scripture reading comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And we begin our reading at verse number 13. These words you do find recorded. It says, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we shall all alive and remain, shall be called up together to meet them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and the readers of his word. Shall we pray? God, our Father, we come to you as we gather this morning. We come with bowed down heads and humble hearts. We come as we have assembled and gathered ourselves in this place today. We pray now, God, a special blessing upon this bereaved family that you, O oh God, would give them the strength that they need as they make it through this service and not just this service but the days that will follow this service God I pray that you would remind them that you're still God and you're still good you told us in your word God that you would never leave us and neither will you forsake us you told us in your word that you will be with us always even till the end you told us in your word that if we lift up our eyes unto the hills from which cometh our help, that all of our help, it does come from you. And so, God, we trust you at your word. We take you at your word. We pray for this family, God, that you would allow them to lean on each other, but most of all, to lean on you. Give them strength, God, to trust you, even when they can't trace you. Remind them, God, and you said that all things work together for the good of them that love you. And God, we love you today. We pray for this entire family. Those who are not able to be here, God, I pray that you would touch them wherever they might be. Give them what they need, God. Thank you for friends who thought it not a robbery to come and share with this family on today, God. We pray that you would be with them as well. Bless those, God, who are going to participate in this time of celebration. We want to thank you, God, for the life and legacy of this our beloved who's now gone on. But God, we want to thank you for the time you've allowed her here on this side with her husband, her, her son, her family, God. We want to thank you for those moments of interacting one with the other. Thank you, God, 
for all the joyous and high and exciting times you allowed them to share one with the other. But today she's at rest. And so God, we pray that you would bless us as we go through the furtherance of this service. Bless the woman of God you sent here to be a blessing to those who've gathered. Give her the words to say, give her what she needs to stand to do what you have assigned for her to do. We'll be ever so mindful. We will be careful to give your name the praise. It is in Jesus' name we do pray and we give thanks. Every believer said, Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. I too love Mrs. Brenda Pye. She was such a beautiful person. And she always presented herself as a queen and a prayer warrior. This song is so pervading and such a blessing to the Pye family. And to you as well. So let's minister this song and keep this family in your prayers. Hallelujah. Sing it along with me. that somebody, somebody prayed for you. Amen. Mrs. Kelly Miller is going to come with the acknowledgments and the reading of the obituary at this time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
Oh, I come before you this morning to bring you the acknowledgments and the reading of the obituary. I won't be before you long, and um, but before I begin, I just want to take liberty and share my condolences with the entire Pye family and staff. Um, Mrs. Brenda Pye, some women are one in a million. Mrs. Brenda Pye was once in a lifetime, and we celebrate her today. Um, there are hundreds of um, cards and acknowledgments, um, but I chose two today. Um, and I will say that a more formal acknowledgment will be um, sent out at a later time. The first from the state of Michigan, from the office of Sylvia Santana, state senator, and a truncated version reads, let it be known that this tribute is offered as a memorial for the life of Brenda Joyce Pye, affectionately known by all as Mrs. Pye. In special tribute, therefore, this document is signed and dedicated in remembrance of Brenda Joyce Pye. May her family accept this tribute as a symbol of the high regard in which her memory is held by so many residents of the city of Detroit, as well as the state of Michigan. And again, this is signed by State Senator Sylvia Santana from the 3rd District. To Mr. Ozzy, H. Pye and family, the Lord is with you. Cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. And that's Psalm 55 and 22. I will never leave thee or forsake thee. Hebrews 13 and 5. Dear family, in God's word and his love, we find the comfort and strength needed to see us through our sorrow. Our hearts are connected with yours in the recent passing of your beloved wife, Mrs. Brenda Pye. We want to express our sympathy and love as you experience this time of sorrow. We want you to know God is giving you the gift of time. We all need time to grieve, a quiet time for reflection, a time to sift through the precious memories and come to grips with what has happened. We all need time to let tears flow, not for the one we lost, who is at peace in heaven, but for ourselves as we realize that things will be different now. We all need time to, be, to just be, a time when we can open ourselves to God's reassurance and let his everlasting love start to heal our broken hearts. God gave us the gift of time. One of its greatest uses is healing of a broken heart. Even during your darkest nights, God has promised to hold your hand. He will be there to comfort you. He will give you strength to face this time of sorrow. In closing, it is our prayer that you find comfort in the words of, the, of, words of David, the psalmist, in Psalm 30 and 5. He says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Family, please understand, morning might not be tomorrow. Morning may not be next week or next month. But since God promised it in his word, we can be reassured that morning will come, and we will understand it better by and by. Yours in Christ, Dr. John D. Tolbert and the Trinity Missionary Baptist Church family. The obituary, written by Brenda Joyce Pye. I was born the third child to Josie and Johnny Morris on June 6, 1953. I had three sisters, Flanetta, Sherry, and Judy, two brothers, Johnny and Ronnie. My dad, my mom and dad, my sister Sherry, and my brother Johnny preceded me in death. I attended Rose and Bagley Elementary Schools until Hampton Middle School and Mumford High School where I graduated in 1971. One of the best years of my life was 1971. In 1971, I met the love of my life, Ozzie Henry Pye III at Highland Park Community College. We married in 1975. We had one son, Ozzie Henry Pye IV. I later graduated from Wayne State University School of Mortuary Science in 1980. That same year, we opened the Pye Funeral Home. I later retired from Pye Funeral Home in 2005. 
I enjoyed taking long walks, dancing, movies, the arts, museums, drawing, painting, jewelry making, and floral arranging. My passion was traveling. And I have been everywhere, man. England, Egypt, Machu Picchu, Australia, Easter Island, Chile, India, Indonesia, Jordan, Thailand, just to name a few. I believe in this life, there are angels that come into your life. One especially who is very, very dear to me, like my own little sister, Kimberly Pye Downs. I've had a beautiful life and I have no regrets. 99% of your happiness in marriage is marrying a good spouse, and I had the best. Ozzy and I have been together for 50 plus years. Trust God, follow his commandments, keep him at the head of your life, and you will be blessed. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. I have many loved ones that I have to leave behind. My beloved husband, Ozzy, my beloved son, Ozzy IV, his beautiful wife, my daughter-in-law, Arnessa, my two beautiful grandchildren, Anila and Ozzy V, my sisters, Flanetta Morris, Judy Montgomery, Gregory, Kimberly Pye Downs, my brother, Ronnie Morris, my mother-in-law, Mabel A. Pye, uncles, aunts, cousins, nieces, nephews, great nieces, great nephews, other relatives, friends. My dear best friend, Mamie Wells, and my staff who are extended family at the OH Pi the Third Funeral Home. Thank you. Hey man, give her a hand, will you? Thank you so much. We do thank God again for all of you who have taken the time out to share with this family. I'm sure that your presence um, here means a great deal to them. Thank you for those of you who shared words and expressed uh, words of comfort to them earlier. Uh, I want to remind all of you that when we leave from this place, uh, this family will need to hear from you. And so those of you who didn't share and won't be able to share in this hour, I want to challenge and charge you to remember them in the days to come. We're going to have remarks at this time. Miss Anila Pye will come. Uh, Miss Kimberly Downs will come. And then Mr. Ozzy uh, Pye IV uh, will come and share words of comfort. We would that you pray with and you pray for them as they come. Good morning. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, um, my relation to, well, Brenda Joyce Pye, my grandmother, and sorry, I, I'm very grateful to have spent so much time that I had with my grandmother. I had 13, coming on 14 long years <laughs> with my grandmother. And every, every day, every week, every month was a delight. I, my grandmother was absolutely inspiring even in her last moments. For reference, uh, I, play, I play in band at my, at my school. In the last few weeks, we thought that she would be here. I played for her at um, her house in sadness that she may not have made it to the next Wednesday. But she pulled through even longer, making it to two of my other concerts. And if that's not inspiring, then I don't know what is. <laughs> my grandmother continues to inspire, even in death, and I will miss her dearly. I know that this is supposed to be a celebration, but right now, the only thing I can truly feel is sadness and grief. 
I'm trying to be as positive as I can, but it's terribly hard to lose someone so close to me. She was one of the best grandmothers I ever had, and I'm so glad that she was able to be loved and spread her message to so many people. And I love her, and I love you, Grandma. I know you're not here anymore. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. As my wonderful grandniece said, praise the Lord. Please bear with me as I share with you what Brenda Joyce Pye did for me. All during the week, a line from what I call a mediocre film kept playing in my head. Beginnings are happy, endings are sad. What counts is what is in the middle. I travel a certain road always. My husband would tell me to take middle belt. He would say it is the fastest. I never would because I did not know that route and I had fear of getting lost. This one day the feeling was strong, take middle belt. I didn't want to, but I did. On that route, I saw trees, signs that said, do not pass, and Brenda's birthday, and Ozzy's next to it in the cars ahead of me. When I had arrived, it was time to turn. Before I did, there was a fawn in the middle of the street looking at me. I stopped, looked, then it danced away. I was then told, you arrived just in time, perfect timing. I just got here. Along the ways, I saw trees and made the connection. The middle is the most important part. Brenda Joyce Pye was my middle. I met her when I was six years old, and she has been in my life ever since. Thank God. She would remind me, I read bedtime stories to you when you were little, and she did. She would take the time to read stories to me while visiting. She was, I guess, 18 years old. She helped me bathe my dog. When I was grieving over the loss at the age of 11, she was with me and had Z next to her. He was in a diaper back then and she said, you have Z, and she was right. He filled my broken heart. It may not seem much, but I was an adolescent and everyone has seen, has seen the movie Jaws, but not me. I wanted to see it and was sad that I couldn't. She said, I will take you. She had just said that she saw it. She said, it's fine, I will see it again. I will make hot dogs, pop popcorn, and Z will sit nicely. <laughs> I will see it again. And we saw it. I was so glad. I told my friends I saw Jaws. They said, no, you didn't. I said, yes, I did, and I could tell them all that happened. She would pick me up to spend the night. She took me, Z, and a friend to the DIA. She would take me and Z to the museums of the DIA. She would cook and we would sit at the little green table. She was a good cook. She taught me how to both fry and bake chicken. Between her and my aunt, I learned to make collard greens. I was invited to go to a sweet 16 party. I didn't know what to wear. She fixed my hair in lots of curls, put makeup on me, and told me I was a beautiful girl. She gave me her dress and shoes to wear. When I was in seventh grade, I wanted to go to the movies with some friends. My mom said no, because a boy I liked at the time wanted to take me. I was allowed to go because Brenda and Z would chaperone. <laughs> I, ne I never made the date because we were a little late. It was fine because I was scared anyway. However, when I was 16, there was another boy I liked. He wanted to take me out, but my mother said no. <laughs> Brenda arranged it so my mother, her and Ozzy would meet him. I was allowed to go. She opened doors for me. People tell me I'm a very good artist. It's because of her. I would watch her draw amazing pictures. I watched her closely. She had said, I didn't know you could draw like this. I always told her, it's because I watched you while growing up. She was so good, she entered the drawing contest in the back of a magazine in the day. She entered when she was a little girl and she actually won. 
My senior year, I was in some class where you work in school, type, etc., and then you find a job. I couldn't get hired. I had no skills for typing, filing, etc. My peers were getting hired, but not me. Brenda said, my mother called her and said, will you help Kim? And Brenda did. She took me to get office closed, walked me through a mock interview, and put herself down as a reference. She was spot on about just about everything I could remember. Because of her, her work, I landed a good job in a law firm in that gold building off the freeway with the black X's. My senior trip came along, and of course I wanted to go. Brenda warned me, she said, you just got a job, you can't go on a vacation. They will fire you. I thought, it will be fine. She was right, I got fired. <laughs> I was learning the job. They may have worked with me had I not told them I was going on my senior trip. Getting fired didn't go over well at home. But Brenda never said I told you so. My junior year, I was going to a prom with the boy I liked. She dialed me up again. She took me shopping to pick out a beautiful pink taffeta dress. She made me the belle of the ball my junior year at his prom, all because of her. I remember being in the bathroom, the girls that did not know me well didn't recognize me. I would watch her give that same loving care with hair and makeup to those that had passed away. I was not afraid of the deceased when I was with her. She showed me a casket is nothing to be afraid of. She even climbed into one to show me that there was nothing to fear. <laughs> my senior year prom, I was going to go with the guy I went to the prom with when he was a senior. He had gotten his tux and everything. But I wanted to go with another guy. She said, Kim, don't do that. You're going to regret it. But I did what I wanted to do. Boy, she was right. I regretted it. He never forgave me, and time passed, and I lost a really nice guy. She was spot on. After a long day of work, she came anyway to my house to fix my hair and make up for senior pictures. After a day at funeral, she and Ozzy drove to MSU to watch me in a fashion show because she knew I needed her there. She and my mother came up one weekend at MSU. I came into my room and it was beautiful. The two of them had cleaned and fixed my beds and everything. She would take me to Ipsy. I would tell her, you treat me like I'm part of your family, and she said, you are. When I was 30 and didn't look like I was going to marry the man I loved with all my heart, I was in a sad place. She and Ozzy were going to a wedding reception, one I was not invited to, but she was taking me along with her anyway. She looked beautiful in her long, silky, tight pants and heels. She was moving around quickly around the room, and I just watched her the way a little sister watches a big sister. I was so down, and she told me in her wisdom, we don't know him, and you can't build a marriage on a spider's web. I did and paid the price. I was in a bad place again. I dropped out of sight, not wanting to see my family, because I was so ashamed. One weekend, I saw a car pull up, and there she was on the porch, dressed beautiful in her heels and a hairdo that I had not seen. She came in and sat down. She said, I looked at the name in the yellow pages and found the address. She said, I'm going to see my sister. She said, there are nice people taking care of you. She said, I wanted to make sure you were okay. One day while on the telephone, she told me, tell Sean that he is a good man. I paused, and she said, tell him. Tell him I said he is a good man. I told him, Brenda wants me to tell you you're a good man. <laughs> he and I both didn't understand. He died not long after. She was spot on, wise, beautiful, humble, and a heart of gold. She always thought about other people and is one of the kindest, if not the kindest, person I know. She was not ever too proud to say I'm sorry. Not if I did something to you, but a genuine I am sorry, which was rare because she's so kind. I can't imagine what life would have been had she not walked into my brother's life or he into hers. Thank God they found each other. I would watch her give speeches when I was young, a young girl. Boy, she could give a speech. She gave one on the virtuous woman. She came with scripture. I remember thinking while sitting in the audience, Z was so young back then, I remember thinking, Brenda is a virtuous woman. She loved her husband, her children, her friends and family. There is a void without her. Thank you, Brenda, for being my middle, the most important part. Thank you and God bless. Amen. Amen. I don't think I have nearly as much to say as my auntie did. Huh? <laughs>
she was, uh, as she says, spot on. I love her for that. Well, first off, I want to just uh, thank all of you for everything, for your presence here and all that. I, I, I love all of you, and um, I, I've received uh, tons of messages, my father and I. We've received plenty of messages from all of you. We, we, we got them all, and, and we thank you all. Uh, if we haven't responded, it's because we've been kind of going through a lot lately, so, so we thank you. Thank you for all that. Uh, first off, I want to thank my PI staff for sure. Let's give them a round of applause. Uh, I, I, I thought my mother looked beautiful. And, um, and, and, and they did a fantastic job. And, um, you know, I, 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 you know I, I don't know if y'all mess with anybody else, but at Pi Funeral Home, y'all got to watch them. They're, they're pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. I think I, I know where they came from. You know. um, also, uh, I uh, want to thank again uh, my, my mother's uh, uh, last church, uh, Trinity Baptist Church, Pastor John Turber, all of you. Thank you, family. Um, thank my Alpha, my Alpha brothers, uh, A5, 006, everybody. I, I, I thank you all because uh, they're all our, our pallbearers for today. I appreciate you all stepping up. Uh, Lloyd, Lloyd Banks, where you at? I want to thank you for everything you did, my brother. Because, you know, you didn't have to. I appreciate you doing that. And um, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, they've uh, supported my wife through all this. I thank you all, my sisters, for that too. And um, also, I just want to say, uh, I'm just glad my mother is no longer suffering. You know, this uh, this uh, pancreatic cancer thing is ugly. And uh, I uh, definitely want to fight against it. I, um, um, I talked to my mother a little bit about this before uh, she passed away. We said that we would do a fund or do, do some sort of thing that we would try to fight against this because uh, it, 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 it took the life of my aunt, my aunt Sherry Samuel. Uh, that's my mother's sister, you know, who I love dearly. I took her too. David, I see you back there, cuz. Uh, saw you back there. Hey, there you go, cuz. And all of them and KP and, you know, all of them, they, they know my pain that I feel right now. And, uh, you know, I, 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 we, we stand together, family, cuz uh, this is something that, you know, hey, all of us, uh, what, what Morris is, all y'all, we all got to get checked. Um, that's real spit. I mean that. We want to get checked, maybe get ultrasound, something that we can kind of get ahead of this thing to make sure that, you know, it doesn't take any of us out like this again. You know, that that's serious. And I, I mean that to all of you. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, no, the, the real thing is that my mother's love is everlasting. And uh, she loved us so much. I, I still feel love even right now. You know, you were my dad and everything. I, and, and, you know, that, that's how I can't be totally broke right now because I, I feel her lifting me up, and I appreciate that. She was amazing. Um, especially to my father, I know my dad, you know, uh, uh, you know, I, he, he, he would say that out of these 50 years, he ain't even had 50 arguments out of her. That, that that's how he was able to go out and achieve all that he has and all this place where we stand here. It's a testament. You know, he, I, I say that, you know, my mother was the inspiration for all of it. He did it, be, did it for her. You know, and also with her, she helped him build it too. You know, she was amazing like that. And, uh, you know, like our mind says, she's a virtuous woman. And, uh, you know, she allowed him to thrive and supported him, and he did all he could. So, but she would always say she loved us more. And uh, that's because she said she couldn't conceive of anybody else loving us more than she could. <laughs> you know, but, but that was who she was. Uh, in addition to just being a, a talented artist and businesswoman. She was just that loving to us. But um, I'll tell you one thing, I'm glad she's in a better place right now. I know where she is. And uh, whenever I need her love, I, I know who she's with and where she is. And I make sure that's never too far away from me or my family. So God bless all of you. And uh, I, I love all of you too. And, and thank you again. Yes. Will you help me celebrate the life of this beautiful lady, amen, who's touched. Come on, you can do better now. She's touched some, she's helped you, she's encouraged you, she's given you the kind words, she's looked out for you, she's provided for you.
She's talked to you. She's given you a helping hand. Come on, let's really give God praise. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. And thank you all so much. And say to the Pi family that we love you and we thank God for you. And to Mr. Pi and uh, his lovely wife who have had a joy of these 10, 12 years I've been privileged to work for the Pi family. Uh, it was always a joy to see them come uh, in the building uh, and share. And uh, would always say something uh, kind to all of us. Uh, I'm going to my seat. We're going to have a selection and minister. Wells is going to come, but I thought about one thing, that God doesn't make mistakes. That everything he does, he either ordains it or he permits it. And God knew that we would have to come today, not so much to be sad, but to celebrate this life that was well lived. And um, I thought about it, that God, Pastor Flowers, always puts one somebody in your life to be a blessing to you. Because, Mr. Pike, what God understands is that all of us are going to need somebody. Amen. And you will not get out of this life without needing the help of one somebody. Amen. God, being the good God that he is, fashioned and created one Mrs. Brenda Pye to come into this world, not just to be a mother, a wife, a grandmother, but to be a friend, Amen. a sister, uh, a beloved person to so many. Amen. And for that reason, if nothing else, we ought to give God praise for that. We're going to have a selection at this time. Uh, peace be still. And Minister Wells will come and give us what God has given for this time, we would that you would pray with her and you'll pray for her as she comes.
you will. And all you've got to say Praise the Lord. Giving all praise and glory to God, our Heavenly Father, for his kindness, for his mercy, for his compassion, for his love that he's given us through his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. I greet you with the holy name of Jesus and peace. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, uh, praise God. I know Brenda. My, sister, my name is Deaconess uh, Mamie Wells, and I'm a member of New Hope Missionary Baptist Church in Southfield, Michigan. Brenda is a I say is a, amen, uh, a dear friend of mine, because that friendship will never, never end, say amen. She's been a confidant, an encourager, and just a really, really good friend, amen. I'd be remiss to uh, just not have a little prayer, and just pray that God would just guide my words that would be encouraging to our loving family here and friends and the community at large. Lord, just speak through me and have a word that will bring us closer to you and love. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Oh, I feel condolences. I'm trying to keep it together. Ozzy, you've been a rock. You've been so courageous, hallelujah. You've been a lover, a best friend. Brenda's knight in shiny armor. She'll tell me all about that. We had our talks, amen. Her provider, her companion, her hunter in the woods, amen. Her coach, her biggest fan, and best of all, the best husband. She loves you so much. Z, you've been so faithful, debonair, talented, amazing, and a loving son. Our NASA, you know I'm not going to forget about you, amen. She, you are a modern day Ruth, amen. You are a D-I-L, otherwise a daughter in love, not in law, amen. You're beautiful, compassionate, and so dedicated. Anila, Anila, our beautiful Anila, amen. When I first saw her first picture, I just fell in love. And uh, I said, oh, can I have her, Bren? She said, no. Um, uh, you have 12 grandkids already. Yes, I can have another one, and I want a little Z, too. <laughs> but, Anila, you're so beautiful, intelligent, you're so gifted, so visionary and awesome. So much of your grandmother in you. Continue on that legacy. 
And little Z, so handsome, joyful, a good fisherman, I heard, amen, and have a very good heart. You bring hope to this world, amen. Dear sisters, amen, Judy, Flonnie, Kim, amen, Mother Pie, all the family members, all the friends, God bless you, because you have been a blessing to Brenda. She's such a lady of love. Brenda would say, as we say to her, amen, that we love her, but she would come back and say, I love you more. And you could never outdo that. And that's how she was, I love you more. My friendship with her is so special. And uh, she asked me to do the eulogy. I said, Bryn, really? You want me <laughs> to do this? And she answered, yes, Mamie, because you know me. I'm so honored and so humble to be able to do this. And I thank you so much, O.C., for allowing this privilege. Brenda, as you all know, have never met a stranger. We'll be out walking at a restaurant. She'll start talking to folks. I say, Brenda, you know them? She say, no. she have that amazing smile. You see her smile, amen? And you'll see that she'll they'll see that smile and she'll start talking and we just go on and on and on. That's how she was. We'll be in our Zumba class and she'll stop and meet someone new, say, are you new? And she'll introduce herself and tell them welcome. That's just the way Bren was. I've known her since the age of 18, and we were together at a, a, a previous or a precursor to the health food bars called Thin Incorporated. At that time, I was thin, <laughs> not anymore. But Brenda kept that beautiful figure, amen? That Brenda was a fun, upbeat, happy, joyful, full of life spirit. Look at her smile again. Just look at that smile, amen? She never bragged, she was unpretentious, with a humble, sweet spirit. My dearest friend, she was faithful, beautiful, regal, electric, non-nonsense, dedicated, a dedicated diva, authentic and real, with real love, amen. Now, I know in Brenda, she was a, a lively person, and I, I thank uh, Reverend Wilson for giving the accolade, but we'll give her another one, because this is a celebration. If she was in her regular venue, she would be moving around, amen. I know this is a sad occasion, but we're celebrating her life, amen. We're celebrating her spirit, and that spirit still lives, amen. So I'm gonna ask you one more time to get on your feet. Get on your feet, give God some praise, hallelujah, and give Brenda that hoop. Let's raise the roof. This is her celebration, hallelujah. This is her day, her honor, hallelujah. Us telling her, hallelujah, that we love her and that she matters, hallelujah, and we'll keep this going. God bless you, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now I pray and I pray and I say, God, what can I say about your child? What words can I use from you? I had a friend say, Mamie, you know, she's in your heart, she'll speak from your heart. So can I speak from my heart today? Amen. Now praise God for Sister Kim, because I got it, Kim. I said, Lord, what can I do? What, who, what can I speak from? And he led me to Proverbs 31, 10 to 31, that virtuous, noble woman. Amen. I said, now Kim, going to give my message here. <laughs> praise God. But that was a wonderful introduction. If you hear about the noble, virtuous woman, amen, that was Bren. I read that scripture, and it's very popular. You hear about it at Mother's Day, women's talks, amen, uh, about the virtuous woman. But as I read it and read it over again, I kept reading, I said, boy, they are really talking about Brenda. That's Bren. Yeah, that's Bren. I wanted the first 10, 11, 12, all the way to 31 to say all of that is her. They were describing, the word was describing my friend Brenda. Uh, the scripture share many noble characteristics for a virtuous woman, uh, of being a noble wife, the confidence of having one's husband, being smart, a smart businesswoman, being highly respected by her, her community and praised in the city. However, I'd like to focus on, just on a few characteristics because there's so many and we'll be here all day, amen? 
Now, we do, when we look at nobility and virtue, it's defined as high moral standards, aristocratic, high class, fine personal qualities, principles, and ideas, magnificent appearance, excellent or superior quality. That sounds like Brenda. Now, who can find a virtuous woman? For she's far worth more than rubies. She lacks nothing of value. She works with eager hands and vigorously. Her arms are strong for the task. Her lamp never goes out at night. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. She's clothed in fine linen and purple, and she clothed with strength and dignity. She laughs at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instructions to her household. Her children arise and call her blessed, and her husband also, and he gives praises to her. Charm is deceptive, and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears God, fears the Lord, is to be praised. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Not to be frightened, not to be scared, but to reverence God, to honor and obey, esteem, behold, and glorify our Heavenly Father. Brenda took God very seriously she was in awe of who and what he is. She would see him everywhere she goes, when she walk in the woods, set by the pond in her property and home in Mississippi, or see a hummingbird coming up to her window in her grandson's bedroom at their home. She studied and sought the truth in his holy word, the Holy Bible. She desired for all whom she loved and known to know God and have a relationship with him. Verse 31 and 31 of Proverbs says, give her the reward she has earned. Give her the reward she has earned. Brenda had fought the fight. She ran the race. She finished her course. God told her, welcome. Well done, my daughter. Well done, good wife. Well done, good mother. Well done, good grandmother. Well done, good sister. Well done, good auntie. Well done, good cousin. And well done, good friend. Come into the joy of the Lord. Corinthians 13 and 13 says, Now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. And that's what Brenda emulated. The greatest reward that she wanted, the reward of eternal life. God in heaven was Brenda's ultimate desire and goal. A precious gift of love from God. Brenda left us a precious gift as well for us to know the Lord. Her legacy of noble love is ours to receive. However, she wants to know that special gift of today, the gift of encouragement and the gift of invitation to know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I really want you to know that Jesus is the King of Kings, the Prince of Peace, and the Rock of all ages. He is the Lily of the Valley, the Way, the Truth, and the Life. Jesus is the Light of the World. Jesus will give us that unspeakable joy. She also wants us to know, John 3 and 16, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. John 14, 1 and 3, so let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe in Jesus. Then our Heavenly Father house, there are many mansions. He has gone to prepare a place for Brenda and one for you and I. God is our keeper. He is our sustainer. He is our comforter. He'll give us that unspeakable joy, as we heard earlier, that we might endure for the night, but God, great joy comes in the morning. Brenda held on. Her morning has come. Our God would give her that peace that surpasses all understanding, and he has it for you and I as well. There's no greater love. I can hear Brenda singing this song. There's no greater love. There's no greater love. There's no greater love. There's no greater love. Jesus went to Calvary to save a wretch like you and me, and that's love. They hung him high, stretched him wide. He hung his head for you and I, he died. But that's not how the story ends, because he's coming back again, and we want to be a ready people. So he rose, and he's coming back. 
So we thank you, Heavenly Father, for sharing your precious love with us through our amazing Brenda, with her noble love. We'll keep that legacy going. Thank you so much for your time and listening, and let's continue that celebration of Brenda Joyce Pine. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so very much. We're going to call for the director of the OH Pilot Third Staff. They're going to come and give us our final instructions as we prepare to depart from this place and to go to the place of internment. All persons who can assist, be it male or female, if you come to the center aisle and help us to bear flowers, please. few more flower bears we got a lot of flowers we need to take out those of you who assist please come to the center aisle please Ladies and flower bearers, please, male or female, if you could assist. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
We have a few more flower bearers, please. Thank you so much. Yeah, a few more people, please. A few more. If we can have just a few more. And about four or five more flower bearers, please. Thank you so much. so much thank you thank you we got it thank you all so much thank you I'm gonna ask everyone if you would stand please everyone standing and please allow the family to exit out first everyone standing